anyway, talking about time is often more confusing than the problem of time itself, so I'll give it my shot. <coughs> and the reason why this problem, I think, is so hard is because we are doing reverse engineering, which is always a very ill-posed problem. The point of view that I'll take is that we need the multiverse to ask these fundamental questions about the era of time, about the selection of the initial conditions, and uh, all the other fundamental issues in physics. So let me start by assuming that there is a multiverse that includes everything. And quantum mechanics is the valid theory. So I can do quantum cosmology, and also, when doing so, address issues like the coherence. So since I'm doing quantum mechanics, information is not lost. Which can lead me to, in combination with the Schrodinger equation, it can lead me to two conclusions. Either time doesn't exist, which I think is what Klaus, the point of view Klaus takes, or that if time exists, it's fundamental. It's not an emerging phenomenon, it's a fundamental phenomenon. So there will be no beginning and no end. And this parameter is always there. However, when bubbles, pocket universes, are born out of this multiverse, and I've discussed one of those in another talk I've given, a mechanism on how that can occur, so at that point, locally, the error of time is induced. And the reason is the following. We have to address the coherence, the coupling of that pocket from all the other branches of the wave function that uh, we'll find in the multiverse, from all the other stuff that is in the multiverse. And I'm taking the point of view that entropy, I'll focus more on the concept of information instead of talking of entropy. And by information, I'll mean physical correlations which are determined by our laws. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, since in the multiverse, which is the bath plus the system, because of unitarity, I'm assuming quantum mechanics is valid, then all physical laws are time symmetric because I have the time translation symmetry here. However, once a bubble is being formed, then we address the issue of the decoherence. So we have an observer that is watching the system and uh, measures this decoupling of the system from, from the environment, from the rest of the stuff in the multiverse, then correlations change. So in that case, the reason for the correlation change is due to the asymmetry between the initial and the boundary conditions. Thinking in terms of a real physical situation, we'll do some sort of coarse graining in order to address the coherence. We'll be integrating out all the irrelevant degrees of freedom and therefore will be throwing away all the what, what the local observer would consider irrelevant correlations, and the amount of information process has changed, the amount of entropy has changed. That will continue to be so as this bubble evolves, because of the dynamics, or dynamical evolution, in the coupling of gravitational degrees of freedom with matter degrees of freedom, as well as the bubble. 
So basically, the picture I'm trying to sell here is that at a fundamental level, there is such a thing as a fundamental parameter of time, but we do have time translation symmetry, and all the laws of physics are uh, do have that symmetry. They are time reversible. But locally, because of funny things happening, this symmetry is broken, and that's why we see an emerging era of time. And one way to look at it is that we are practically breaking the symmetry between the initial conditions and the boundary conditions. So that as a symmetry induces an error of time. If we were to focus on the microphysics that brings this about, we could think of the dynamic of evolution of gravitational and matter degrees of freedom. And that will do information processing. In other words, change the correlations. And that's how we get, thank you, <laughs> that's how we get the arrow of time. So, if I am to, to try and put some flesh in, into these uh, conjectures, what in, in order to, to have some sort of calculational backup to this story, we need to understand the connection between thermodynamics and our theory of gravitation. And this can be done if we knew how to incorporate the degrees of freedom of gravity into the Boltzmann kinetic equation. If we knew how to do that, then we would know how to calculate the information processing and kind of derive this asymmetry between the initial and the boundary conditions. And in that case, we would have at the fundamental level all, all our physical theories have the time reversal symmetry, but locally have this observer, the one that induces the coherence, to show that an emerging era of time is valid only in our local pocket. So, because we are internally bound observers, we would get the false impression that there should be an error of time anywhere, but in reality, the story that the laws of physics are fundamentally time reversible is totally fine. So, and the clock should just measure the rate at which the information changes. And the clock is just measured. <laughs> Uh, 30 seconds? Just a diagram, no more words. <laughs> but I can take questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Anthony, do you want to come up and get set up here while um, we take the questions? Photo finish. But then you go second for. Laura. Yeah. So we know that uh, uh, there is time reversal violation that has nothing to do with thermodynamics. And maybe it's not uh, not even with gravity, right? Because it's. Uh, uh, Give me an example. Oh, it, uh, the uh, well, the, the uh, time reversal violation and chaos and and, and demons, right? Like the, the the weak interaction. Okay. Um. So how does it fit in your How about it? How does it fit in your picture? I mean, you're. Yeah, it's a local process. So you have that. That's where the information processing would kick in. Besides that example, there are other more obscure examples. We know that there is a direct coupling of the curvature to the matter fields. And, and there is that information transfer between the two. You, you did convert through reheating vacuum energy into particles. And you know how to get particle creation out of uh, gravitational fields. We don't know how to write down these processes and, and calculate that information transfer. But locally, by increasing the number of your relevant uh, correlations, that, that's how you uh, change the entropy. Sorry? Time translation symmetry is not the same thing as time reversal symmetry. I got the sense you were identified. No, I do have time translation symmetry in the multiverse. And the laws of physics in that multiverse also have the time reversal symmetry. They, they are symmetric with respect to time uh, going to minus time. Yours? Yeah. <laughs> Laura, I was a bit 
just confused about your statement that correlations are determined by laws. And then they can depend on initial conditions. No, yeah. correlations between any two objects are determined by our equations. Not anything can correlate to anything. We, we have a set of theories that tells us how things start to each other. But whether usually depends on, on an initial state, not just on law. That, yes. That's where the asymmetry comes from. Yeah, so they're not completely determined by law. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can we have one last question, assuming it's quick? Alan? Uh, maybe two questions. Uh, are you saying that for your substrates you can have bubbles nucleating with time going in different directions and different bubbles? Um, different directions, I, I, I could not make a statement, but I, I would distinguish the, the local time of each pocket from this background fundamental time. Okay, and follow up. <laughs> uh, don't you think you have, in some sense, already introduced an arrow of time by starting with the substrate within which bubbles then form? Um, no, because if these bubbles come from, from such a place, from, from the multiverse or whatever, then we, we know that there has to be some sort of measure there that induces the coherence and, and watches this system. So the separation between the system and the pattern will always be the, the story. It's, I, I don't see how, how to get around that. Okay, well, let's thank Laura again.